All right, now, I think we'll get started now. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to our monthly Lunch and Learns. Uh, my name is Caroline G, Age-Friendly Community Connector with the Edmonton Seniors Coordinating Council, and I will be your host today. Uh, working behind the scenes is Megan Lala, our uh, communications uh, specialist with ESCC. This event is brought to you by Age Friendly Edmonton and is an initiative of the Edmonton Seniors Coordinating Council supported by the City of Edmonton. Age Friendly Edmonton is part of a global movement to build age friendly cities and communities and is a city that recognizes the diverse populations and needs of seniors and actively supports their inclusion, engagement and well being. We respectfully acknowledge that the Edmonton Seniors Coordinating Council is in Treaty 6 and on the traditional lands of the Cree, Blackfoot, Iroquois, Dene, Nakuto So, Metis, and Saltu, and Ashibi, Ojibwe nations. We acknowledge and respect the past, present, and future generations of all First Nations, Inuit, and Metis people who continue to strengthen Edmonton and Canada. Now, just a few minutes to go over some housekeeping items. Uh, the presentation that you will hear today is pre-recorded. Our presenter, Sheena Jaffer, uh, will join us live for the Q&A immediately after the video is played. If you have comments or questions as they come up, uh, as they come to mind, feel free to type them in the chat. We will do our best to answer them at the end during the Q&A as time allows. Our presentation today is approximately 50 minutes long. Please keep muted while the presentation is being played. You can view the recording later on ESCC's YouTube channel. And I'll ask uh, Megan to put that in the chat for us today. So um, our presenter today, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to her. Um, Sheena Jaffer has been a valued member of the Age Friendly Edmonton Leadership Table for the past five years. To colleagues and others uh, in her professional and personal circles, Sheena is known as a fierce advocate for aging in place, universal design, age-friendly initiatives, along with the potential and promise of how assistive technology complements and supplements successful aging in place and independence. Through research, she firmly believes that as our population ages, Older adults will want to continue to live in their homes of their choice and assistive devices will play an increasingly significant role in the health quality of life continuum. So without further ado, um, I will tee up the presentation uh, called Aging in Place and Universal Design. So just bear with me. Love this technology, there we go. And uh, I hope you enjoy the presentation. Uh, it's approximately 50 minutes long. Hello, everyone. My name is Sheena Jaffer. For the last 10 plus years, I have been largely working in the field of aging with a specific focus on aging in place, universal design, assistive technology, the World Health Organization's age-friendly cities movement, and healthy longevity. It is a pleasure to have this opportunity to speak about topics that I have personal resonance with and am very passionate about. Aging in place has remained a hot topic since I got into this field over a decade ago and is expected to be a trend for the next couple of decades. It continues to be a timely and important topic, warranting much more public education and discussions about the various ways those aspiring to age in place can successfully and cost-effectively accomplish this goal. Aging in place 
is a choice one can make years or even decades in advance by assessing if that's possible in your current residence. Many homes, particularly those with multiple stories or those with narrow corridors that can be difficult to widen may not be feasible for aging in place modifications. Making these decisions well in advance and before you may actually need the accessibility features can make your aging in place journey more successful and even less stressful. So our aim today is to capture the attention of both younger and older Canadians to encourage you to think and plan ahead your holistic housing needs while also paying close attention to the overall age friendliness of the communities that you live in. For today's webinar, our objectives are proactive planning and considerations for healthy longevity and aging in place, understand universal design and its benefits, and thirdly, to explore the range of home modifications depending on needs and preferences. So Canada's rapidly aging population. Aging is a powerful mega trend of our times. Canada, like many other countries around the globe is currently undergoing a seismic demographic transition. Older Canadians now represent the fastest growing segment of our population, which is expected to double over the next two decades. According to the latest census data from Statistics Canada, our population keeps growing older, is expected to age more rapidly in the coming years, and so by 2031, which is in merely about seven years from now, nearly a quarter of Canadians will be aged 65 years and older. And the oldest baby boomers will begin turning 85, making the 85 and older one of the fastest growing age groups. Just over the last 40 years, Canada's senior population has more than tripled in size. And over the next 20 years, the population of those 65 years and older is expected to grow by almost 70%. The number of adults ages 85 and older, which is the group that most often needs help with daily activities and personal care, will triple. So when Canada established its healthcare system in the mid 60s, the median age of Canadians was about 25 years. And during those times, most did not live beyond their late 60s or early 70s. Today, life expectancy is around 85 years for women and 80 years old for men. Canada is now considered one of the super aged countries. And so this unprecedented population aging has many major implications, including our topic today about how we age in place and continue to live in the forever home of our choice. Longevity, is enabling new approaches to the traditional three-part journey of education, work, and retirement. So everything we think we know about longevity, aging, and retirement is radically changing with immense implications, not just for our well-being and healthcare, 
but for our societies at large. So what is aging in place? Aging in place has been one of the most widely discussed topics in relation to the journey of aging and retirement. So perhaps many of you here may already be very familiar with this term, which the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation defines as the ability to live in the same home or community where you have always lived safely, independently, and comfortably as you age. Based on their research, 85% of aging boomers over 55 years old that were surveyed stated a preference to age in place in their homes and communities, even if there are changes with their health. There have been many other studies and research over the years that keeps revealing the strong desire for both older adults as well as persons with disabilities to continue to live in their own homes and communities. Aging in place can provide more independence and autonomy and remaining in a long time home and setting in a familiar community has shown to positively impact overall health and happiness. Ultimately, the goal of aging in place is to maintain or improve your quality of life. One thing I have kept learning over the years through my interactions with a number of older adults, as well as persons with disabilities is yes, Everyone wants to continue living in their own home and community, but often there is little or no planning for any future needs or eventualities. The thing about aging or disabilities is that people don't think about it until it's upon them. So what you do proactively, whether you are 36 or 66, could give you more control over future changes and help you avoid making hasty or costly decisions. And here I speak from my own experience when I was a caregiver to both my parents. We lived in a three level home with no bathroom or bedroom on the main level. And suddenly one day my father had a stroke and we found ourselves totally unprepared. As the overall statistics on this slide tell us, from a social, economic, emotional, or psychological standpoint, there is a strong case for aging in place. There have been various studies to substantiate this, starting with older adults from ages 45 and up with a strong desire to continue to live in their own homes and communities. In one survey, 95% of Canadians 45 and older believe aging in their own homes would allow them to retain their independence, comfort, and dignity. However, Retooling a home to enable aging in place is usually a reactionary decision. Given the statistics and the fact that majority already live in their own homes, it is apparent that we need to give our homes more staying power. And what I mean by staying power is to start thinking future readiness long-term by investing in design features that will keep your home in step with any changing needs to enable you to age in place and not to be stuck in place. So longer life expectancies, shrinking assets, insufficient availability, 
and the high cost of continuing care facilities may likely limit options for many. And so ensuring the future readiness of your home for any physical or cognitive limitations that may arise is certainly a very wise investment. Studies have shown that aging in place is a more cost-effective option and provides better options for health outcomes and overall quality of life than being in institutional care. With the housing stock we have today, it's fair to say that only a small percentage is conducive to aging in place. So even if you are currently healthy enough to stay in your own home, it is wise to prepare for any future eventuality. And please keep in mind that while aging in place might be your goal, it ultimately isn't always the best option for everyone. So why is it important to plan ahead? As you will note on this slide, according to statistics, out of every 100 people, 21 will have arthritis, seven will have diabetes, 17 will have respiratory challenges, five will have orthopedic issues, three will have effects from strokes, three will have multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, or ALS. Since most housing does not meet accessibility needs, being proactive about retrofitting for aging in place makes perfect sense. Yet many times, it's a reactionary decision due to a fall and injury, losing mobility, or being diagnosed with a chronic disease. To future ready your home, the key is to plan ahead and start thinking about where and how you want to live as you age and what steps you need to take to achieve that lifestyle. As you plan, you should consider the unexpected. This includes taking into account what you would do if you had a sudden onset of a chronic illness, a disability, or change in resources. We have certainly learned important lessons from the COVID-19 pandemic, which has exposed complex and interconnected set of social and physical challenges for older adults and persons with disabilities living in their own homes. Many were confined to their own homes, not able to come out at all, not having internet, and as a result, faced social isolation and disruptions in services, medical care, and access to food and other goods, particularly during stay-at-home orders. COVID-19 has shed a valuable spotlight on the need for more accessible homes as well as telehealth services and technology solutions. And in this regards, the home has and will continue to keep evolving as a personal health hub. Additionally, based on statistics, one in 10 seniors are expected to live to be 100 years old. While 90% seniors prefer to live in their own homes, less than 25% have the needed home adaptations to make their home universally accommodating and age-friendly. Throughout 99% of our human history, 
the average life expectancy is not what we have today. We have leaped from 47 years in 1900 to almost 80 years today. We are now living four decades longer than the population a century ago. As we speak, in Canada, we have over 10,000 centenarians. That is persons who are 100 or more years old. And just to give you a perspective of the increase, we had around 1,000 in 1971. This number is expected to rapidly increase. And so by 2065, it is projected that we may have 88,000 centenarians in Canada. And an interesting fact is that most of today's Canadian centenarians are women. Clearly, we are witnessing an unprecedented longevity dividend and a growing number of centenarians for which we need to be proactively better prepared. Already at aging conferences and other educational and awareness venues, the conversations have been shifting from reactive aging societies to more prepared longevity cities designed with an integrative approach to the whole life. As you will note from the list on this slide, there are a wide range of factors that need to be taken into consideration when planning for aging in place. Essentially, everything from your neighborhood to finances to transportation are important aspects for preparing for the future. Each of these areas is a topic in itself. For our purposes today, we will focus on the actual structure, the house or home, which serves as the focal point and the foundation for successful aging in place. Many of us reference our residences as home sweet home. It is really where we tend to be most comfortable, happy, and at peace, surrounded with personal preferences and all kinds of special and cherished memories. The level of readiness of your home plays an integral role to allow you to continue staying in it as your health, abilities, or needs change. Your home can also be the delivery site for caregiving and other home and community-based services. And so the home's design features and conditions not only impact your own self-care, but also the provider's ability to deliver care. So as you plan ahead, it's important that your home is smartly equipped to accommodate all possible scenarios. As quoted on this slide, according to the American Occupational Therapy Association, home modifications are changes to adapt the living spaces to increase usage, safety, security, and independence. And according to the Canadian Association of Occupational Therapists, home modifications are environmental interventions that aim to support performance and engagement in meaningful activity as well as living in place in one's own home. In the context of aging in place, I believe we should view home modifications as adapting or retrofitting an existing home, both inside and outside, as personal needs dictate, 
to make the overall environment safer and supportive of conducting your daily activities and independent living. Home modifications are a key consideration towards aging in place. As noted earlier, our housing stock was not constructed with aging or disabilities in mind. Based on surveys, a significant percentage of the 65 plus households have at least one person who has difficulty using some feature of the home, such as climbing stairs or using a bathtub. And most homes do not have step-free entry, a first floor bedroom and bathroom, or at least one other accessibility feature. So appropriate modifications can reduce physical barriers from the home environment and enable safer access around the house. Home modifications are a particularly important feature of fall prevention. Falls are the leading cause of injury-related hospitalizations among older ad adults in Canada leading to 87% of these hospitalizations. Over 90% of hip fractures are caused by falling. Based on recent data, over 52% of falls occur in the home and majority of them occur in the bathroom. The benefits of home modifications include making your basic and instrumental activities of daily living possible, reduce falls and injuries, as well as support caregiving. Home modifications and repairs have the potential to greatly reduce the risk of falls. Undertaking home modifications is a process. It begins with educating yourself, doing an assessment, setting personal priorities, securing funding, arranging installation and follow-up. And each of these steps is important. Some examples of home modifications range from removing clutter and throw rugs, enhancing lighting and re rearranging furniture, installing grab bars, handrails or ramps, widening doorways that allow access by a walker or wheelchair, installing a chairlift, elevator, and much, much more. RESNA, which stands for the Rehabilitation, Engineering, and Assistive Technology Society of North America, has a list of what home modification should consist of, such as accessibility, adaptability, universal design, and visitability. Retrofitting your home to make it more accessible and adaptable offers many advantages, and in some cases could be the difference between staying in your home and having to move. Considering most Canadian homes were not purpose-built with aging in place or longevity in mind, they require at least some modifications to achieve this. So as you will note on this slide, there are different types of home modifications. Major home modifications are structural changes such as reducing or eliminating steps to make the home entrance accessible, creating wider doors and hallways, integrating a caregiver suite, or installing an elevator. Minor or do-it-yourself home modifications can include replacing door handles, night lights, easily mounted cordless lights, bath benches or shower seats, 
removing throw rugs and adding lazy Susan shells. Regular repairs are important. As homes get older, just as we all do, it is important to monitor the structural condition of our homes, such as your roof, furnace, sidewalks, pathways into the home, to make sure that they're all in good order. Home modifications can also include adding assistive technology. With the ever evolving innovations and trends, there are thousands of tools and devices that can supplement aging in place. Ranging from low, mid to high technological devices, these can be effective solutions towards your daily and instrumental activities. Tools such as reachers, digital voice assistants, wearables, apps to improve balance and prevent falls, sensors, reading and communication devices, telehealth and remote monitoring systems, accessible vehicles, and much, much more. And durable medical equipment, such as specialized or hospital beds, breathing or oxygen equipment and accessories to support specific needs, safety, and comfort. For already built existing and older homes, Several provinces provide support to older Canadians to modify their homes through subsidies, tax rebates, and low interest loans. With collaboration from the March of Dimes Canada, the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation has identified over 50 low cost or no cost modifications to make your home more accessible. These simple modifications are intended to improve safety and accessibility for everyone, and particularly for seniors and persons with disabilities. Smart home technology is quickly earning an important place in the aging in place and assistive technology ecosystem by smartly enabling safe and independent living. The Internet of Things has been a game changer as it provides possibilities to utilize Wi-Fi on just about everything, which can increase independence, productivity, safety and health in your home. For example, utilizing telemedical technologies for remote monitoring is ever evolving to accommodate aging in place. There are already an increasing number of older adults as well as persons with disabilities using generic smart technology giving them more confidence in their ability to live independently. Smart home technology is now readily available through various commercial channels, including some large hardware stores for tasks such as controlling lights, fans, and thermostats, accessing entertainment, TV, music, security monitoring, smart stoves, fridges, dishwashers, smoke alarms, doorknobs, beds, toilets, and much, much more. And all of these data points are intended to make aging in place a viable option for an increasing number of people. As noted on this slide, universal design is known as a movement and approach to designing products and environments that can be used by all people, regardless of one's ability. 
And according to the Center for Excellence in Universal Design, it is sometimes also called inclusive design or barrier-free design, which is the design and structure of an environment that can be understood, accessed, and used to the greatest extent possible by all people, regardless of their age or ability. No question, we now have urgency for accessible and inclusive communities as our population continues to age. With functional limitations that may arise with aging related to mobility, vision, and hearing, as well as any other challenges, universally designed spaces are paramount for all of us to continue to live in our communities to our full potential. As we live longer, it can become harder to stay in our homes without preparing for future eventualities or adjusting for disabilities. These seven principles of universal design are equitable use, flexibility in use, simple and intuitive use, perceptible information, tolerance for error, low physical effort, and size and space for approach and use. So universal design tends to accommodate people from every walk of life. Let's now have a look at a specific example of each of these principles. Universal design principle one is equitable use. When we say equitable use, it should be useful to people with a diverse range of abilities. An example is a front door with no step entry as shown on this slide. And here's another image of a no step entry into the home. If you drive around our neighborhoods, you will notice many homes that have been built with a series of steps to get from the surrounding ground area to the entrance of the home. As you can imagine, this can be challenging for those using mobility devices, such as a walker, wheelchair, or even a cane. Visitability, which means the elimination of barriers to enter a home, is an important accessible feature, welcoming for those who live there, as well as guests and occasional visitors. Universal design principle two is flexibility in use. It accommodates a wide range of individual preferences and abilities. And the example on the slide is scissors that are designed for, for right or left hand users. Universal design principle three is simple and intuitive use which really means the design should be easy to understand regardless of the user's experience, knowledge, language skills, or current concentration level. An example as shown on this slide is a touchless faucet that facilitates practical and automatic water flow and stops after about a few seconds of inactivity. Universal design principle four is perceptible information. This principle communicates necessary information effectively to the user, regardless of ambient conditions or sensory abilities. The example on this slide is a round wall thermostat with enlarged visual information, tactile lettering, edge texture and audible click stops at specific degree intervals. Universal design principle five is tolerance for error, which minimizes hazards and 
the adverse consequences of accidental or unintended actions. An example as shown on this slide is an undo feature in computer software that allows the user to correct mistakes without penalty. Universal design principle six is low physical effort, which can be used efficiently and comfortably with a minimum of fatigue. An example as shown on this slide is a lever loop handles on doors and faucets. And here is another example of lever or loop handles on drawers, doors, and faucets. Universal design principle seven is size and space for approach and use. Appropriate size and space is necessary for approach, reach, manipulation, and use, regardless of user's body size, posture, or mobility. An example as shown on the slide is a bathroom with universal design features. It is important to be aware of our surroundings and any hazards in the home. The bathroom is definitely a high risk area in your home for slips and falls. 55% of falls occur inside the home and a large number of these happen in the bathroom. The importance of ensuring your surroundings are hazard free cannot be overstated. We all have to consciously remove anything on the floor that can increase the risk of falling, such as wires or throw rugs. Raised or high toilet seats tend to increase safety and make rising easier and may also help avoid slips or falls. Raised toilets may relieve your joints from any added pressure, especially for those who suffer from arthritis and find it difficult to bend joints. And for those who are assisted by caregivers, transfers can be more safer. A side-by-side -side refrigerator can provide easier access at any height or mobility level, precluding the need to bend down. In the next few slides is a brief checklist of sample modifications for the different areas of your house, such as doors and entryways, for example, having handrails at the front door, bathroom with firmly installed grab bars, kitchen with a side-by-side -side refrigerator, and on the main level, whereby at least one bedroom and an accessible bathroom are recommended. In making housing choices, either remaining in your current home or moving, Key factors to consider are the accessibility or adaptability features of the house. So evaluating features such as front entry steps to indoor staircases, to rolling showers or shelving, enhancing lighting to lowering thresholds, all these enhancements can highly contribute towards your desire to stay in your own home confidently, safely, and independently. The chart on this slide shows some of the most commonly completed projects by homeowners desiring to age in place. And as you will note, adding grab bars, ramps, widening doorways, adding a bathroom to the first floor are some of the most popular modifications. So how do we pay for home modifications? D 
Depending on the scope and cost of modifications you may be undertaking, there are a number of ways you can finance home modifications. On this slide, I have listed a number of possibilities, though this is not an exhaustive list of avenues. Given the societal needs of today, the number of programs offering grants and assistance has significantly grown just over the last decade. For already built homes, as I mentioned before, several provinces currently support older Canadians to modify their homes through subsidies, tax rebates, and low interest loans. A good place to start is with your local senior's office. To learn more about the programs and financial assistance offered for aging in place in your city or province. There seems to be a general assumption that home modifications for aging in place are expensive. While some can range in a few thousand dollars, others are fairly affordable. Therefore, it is important to do your homework to allow you to make informed decisions. So who can help you with home modifications? Some, of, some examples of professionals who can assist are home modification and retrofitting practitioners, home builders, engineers, occupational therapists, as well as certified aging in place specialists. But there are also others such as your physical therapists, your physicians, case managers, your local seniors office, and provincial and federal offices on aging and disabilities. In the spirit of continuous and lifelong learning, generally, the more professionals you converse with about your needs, the more you will learn and better understand what's best for you. As the majority of us choose to age in place, both personally or as professionals interested in helping others remain in their homes, there are many physical concerns to be aware of so we can be as effective as possible. We all need to be conscious about how vision, balance, mobility, hearing, and other co common activities may be changing, and whether our homes are providing the safest living environment. On this slide are some key questions to help trigger your thinking about your individual or a family member's needs and preferences. Again, this is not an exhaustive list as many have unique circumstances. We already know one size does not fit all and aging in place may not always be the best route for everyone. As such, it is important to reflect about your individual and holistic needs and desires and what may be most practical and best for you. What you do early enough can give you more control over future changes and help you avoid making hasty or costly decisions. So whether it's simple installation of non-slip tiles or a major home makeover to accommodate one-story living, the time to do those renovations is before the need arises. And speaking from my own experience, proactive renovations for aging in place are more likely to be well thought out rather than rushed. As we live longer, it can become harder to stay in the homes of our choice without adjusting for what the future may bring. So just as we think about other considerations for retirement years, aging in place modifications should be considered a priority as well. 
getting it done while you're physically and financially able will alleviate future challenges. Studies and data have proven that this investment in your aging in place, future readiness can save you thousands versus a cost outcome due to a fall or subsequent assisted living or a nursing home relocation. Considering the longevity dividend, it's extremely useful for everyone who owns a home and plans to live in it. What some may call a forever home for as long as possible to invest some time in learning more about home accessibility. While there are modifications you can make yourself, it's a wise investment to retain a certified specialist to provide professional insights and guidance. Shopping around and getting quotes is a learning experience and is beneficial for you to ensure you're not getting overcharged. We live in times of overpowering scams and you absolutely want to ensure you're getting the best deal along with trusted contractors and handymen. And finally, given all the resources and subsidies available, take the time to find out more about the programs offered in your city and province. And here are some wise words from Rick Hansen. An accessible home provides us with the freedom to participate fully in life. So while retrofitting your home to be barrier free and suitable for aging in place can seem like a lot of work and challenging, it's hard to put a price on the independence, safety, and sense of well-being you can gain from aging in the right place for you. So your diligent efforts to keep learning and exploring all possible options related to home modifications, universal design, and assistive technology can go a long way towards the road to independence and safety. Finally, I truly believe that it's really worthwhile to take the necessary steps to future ready your home so you can thrive where you live with grace, dignity, autonomy, and independence. Aging and disabilities are a fact of life that we all need to recognize and address. Thank you for making the time to join us. In the spirit of lifelong learning, we hope you have taken away some useful insights. And with that, I'm very happy to answer any questions you may have. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sheena, um, for that presentation that was pre-recorded. I noticed you, uh, I just made an observation that you wore the same sweater today as the day that you recorded the uh, the presentation. Anyways, I thought that uh, was kind of funny. Um, anyways, well, thank you so much. We do have some time for some questions. and. Uh, uh, there was no questions in the chat, but I do have um, somebody that's raised their hand. Um, I don't know how to say the name, and uh, please excuse me if I've said it uh, incorrectly. Um, Miran, Miran Sharif, um, if you could unmute and uh, feel free to ask your question to Sheena. Hey, um, just see if I can find. Okay, well, we can come back um, to Miran. Um, is there anybody else that has any questions? Um, please raise your hand. What, no questions? 
Okay. Um, oh, here we go. Um, oh, good question. Uh, from good question from Janet, I believe. What is? Uh, thank you, Janet, for the question. What is a certified specialist? Oh, um, Sheena, you'll have to unmute yourself, my friend. Okay, so a certified specialist is uh, is someone that has gone through the training of all the necessary requirements of um, what are needed uh, to make the home more accessible, uh, more age friendly and more uh, livable, basically. So it's a, it's a training that um, takes uh, anywhere between a few months, uh, some, some invest in it for a longer period and uh, particularly those who are building homes. But uh, there is a lot of uh, certified aging in place specialists and uh, they are more common, I think, uh, in the US uh, where I lived than here in Canada. But there are some uh, certifications here in Canada and you can find people that can assist you with, um, just like an occupational therapist might, assist you with um, providing some kinds of uh, guidance about what may be needed in your specific home. So uh, the certification comes through a level of education. Okay, thank you very much, Sheena. Um, just as a follow-up question from Janet, what would their business be um, and how would we find them? All right, so um, we we know that, I mean, if you, if you Google and you find out, uh, just Google for home uh, accessibility specialists or uh, certified home uh, practitioners, um, and they go by different titles. And uh, maybe some of you on, on this um, uh, group here might be familiar with uh, some of them in the city of Edmonton or in Alberta. But uh, I know that, um, you know, where I've lived in the US, there is a directory of certified aging in place specialists, which is put out by the um, National Association of Home Builders. So if you go to some of the Canadian home builders as well, uh, you might find a list of people. The, the, the fact is that there is so much information out there and one has to just cons be consistent in, in trying to find it, not consistent, but persistent in finding it. And uh, one of the things that I might also point to is that we have the, this, this presentation is actually hosted in, in conjunction with the Edmonton uh, Seniors Coordinating Council, uh, which is a entity that has all kinds of information for seniors. And you can always uh, try and uh, reach out to them as well. Great, thank you very much, Sheena. Um, we'll put um, our Seniors Coordinating Council um, website. Um, maybe this is an opportunity to flog our link letter as well, <laughs> uh, which is uh, which has the latest in uh, senior sector information. Uh, but I'll get Megan to put the link um, in, or put the link uh, in the chat for those that uh, have uh, never been on our website. Um, Tatiana, okay, um, just a comment from her. Oh, actually, um, a question. Is there a clear outline, online database of assisted technology per domain, um, such as home, speech, cognition, et cetera, that, can, that both clients and case managers can consult? Yeah, so um, there isn't one holistic one. It's it's kind of fragmented uh, in terms of the, the world of assistive technology. I think this is something that uh, many of us that are vested in this area talk about it all the time, that there's not one go-to place to find all the assistive technology you need. So basically, you just have to Google. And um, I think uh, we've done some presentations on assistive technology, or I have done them for the Seniors Council. And um, there are some resources that we've outlined uh, over there. And perhaps, Carolyn, this is something we can share with uh, everyone again. Um, you know, and we can keep adding to that list as we find out about more. But uh, yeah, I, I totally see the need for what you are raising, Tatiana. And uh, hopefully, one of these days, we can all work collectively to make it happen. Thank you, Sheena. Yes, I can share um, that information with everybody here. I will be sending everybody a link to a survey. So after every um, Lunch and Learn, we send out a, a survey. So I can attach 
uh, any of those links uh, in a in a handout. So uh, we'll chat about that, Shana, and make sure that uh, people are equipped with some resources that they can go to. Uh, this is such a big area um, that uh, this presentation for me today is just a starting point for people gather your information and make informed choices. Yeah, so, and uh, mm -hmm. that I want to highlight uh, is that, uh, as I mentioned, I've worked a lot in the U.S. There is this this uh, document called the um, ARP Home Fit Guide. It has a lot of useful resources, and it's it's a bit older because you know this is. But I've retained it because it it does have and a lot of useful information, and you can just Google and download it from the website. Um, it should be available. So this is one resource. Um, I also have another resource here, which is about the aging and its financial implications. Uh, and this particular uh, uh, publication has a whole list of uh, different things that you can do. So it's very, it's very thoroughly um, taken into consideration many needs that uh, would be apparent in a home. So, uh, so but many of these uh, uh, publications are, are free um, that you can download from the websites. And again, we can share the links for that. All right. Any other questions? I'll take one more question. It is uh, three minutes after one o'clock. So I just want to re respect people's time. And uh, yeah, I don't see anybody. Do you, Megan, on the screen? No? OK, well, great. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. I just have a few sort of last minute uh, last minute words for you. And um, I'm just going to, oh, that's Sheena. <laughs> All right, that's our q and I just wanted to promote our next uh, age-friendly Edmonton Lunch and Learn. It's going to be Wednesday, October the 18th, again, from noon to 1 p.m. And it's Finding Balance. Um, and uh, we'll have our presenter from Alberta Health Services. I think it'll be very timely. Um, she'll be talking about falls prevention as well, and uh, with uh, with the with winter coming, it uh, it'll be a very important topic to help keep us safe. Um, we don't quite have the um, the registration information on there. Megan and I will be working on that this afternoon, and uh, you can register uh, for that particular session. Um, I'd also like to uh, promote our uh, event. Um, on October 4th at 2 p.m. at Central Lions, an artistic celebration, uh, YEG's older adults um, will have an opportunity to showcase their talents in celebration of International Day of Older Persons. Um, uh, just ask Megan to put the um, link in the uh, in the chat and you can get more information on that. Uh, we have uh, some poetry readings, some musicians and some artists that will be uh, showcasing uh, their talents. And uh, if you have a, a talent that you would like to uh, like to show people or perform, um, yeah, please let us know. All of the information can be found in the Eventbrite uh, link that uh, Megan uh, has for you there. Uh, so hopefully you can join us on that day. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, if you have any further questions, I, people always have questions afterwards, feel free to email me at agefriendly at seniorscouncil.net. And as I said earlier, a short survey about this event will be sent out. And uh, I'll uh, also attach a list of resources. And uh, thank you very much for joining us today and um, have a great week. Bye for now.